when company was releasing april 12 2002 i was filming for satya the same weekend that scene where rani is crossing the fatak and i'm chasing behind her and you know requesting her ki manja um suddenly i start seeing a few bystanders you know bara ek baje who start to come out of gate galaxy and say ki kya ho raha shooting chal rahi hai yahan pe kaun shooting kar raha hai you know? they start coming they say hey, rani mukherjee aur ye chandu hai uh because chandu is the name of my character yeah, so yeah. they didn't know my name yeah. hey, hey chandu hey chandu bhai hey chandu bhai tu aur teri company khalas hey chandu bhai right with me today is uh, anu sharma and uh, vivek anand obrai anu i hope i pronounced your name correctly uh they are the founders of impresario global we're going to be talking to them about that uh to start off with first of all of course welcome to the show candid conversations vivek is in london uh whatever the time is over there and uh, but to begin with what was really the idea behind you know starting impresario global anu please ladies first thanks kabir um so you know all my life actually it's it's actually quite personal why i started impresario global and got you know vivek support through the entire journey um there is something called civic empathy right um the propensity of an individual to be civic minded or act in a manner that is pro social uh which is something um that has been very close to me i've always felt that that's something that that our society specifically could do uh, more with and um, my education so far also you know through my life it's been in corporate social responsibility and then my work experience also sort of culminated in the creation of impresario global so you can say the main reason behind starting this was to create real impact and drive civic empathy in communities locally okay and you know to to talk about more specifics really what kind of if you can give us some uh, one two three whatever examples of different ways in which you know the company has driven um, uh, social performance or civic mindedness right so um, we hope to we are still pre revenue like i you know mentioned before um, but how we are planning to do that is actually threefold uh, through knowledge attitude and practice um knowledge uh, how we are creating you know a specific uh, content module series that is going to uh, you know be uh, a detailed um this uh, discourse on global causes the sustainable development goals and it's going to tackle them very very uh, you know um, in a manner that people can understand so to say you know not non scientific non technical but having said that it does uh, hope to drive attitudinal and behavioral changes as well so those are the other two legs so i'll give you a very simple example yeah uh, we <laughs> study about uh, recycling right in schools uh, mm. that's uh, a part of the curriculum mm. but what we hope to do by pushing our karma uh, series content series um is basically ensuring that when moms or parents drive their kids somewhere they tell them that let's keep our disposal bag in the car or you know um, so that we don't have to litter on the road or throw something out of our cars or something as simple as you know when going on a holiday and you know trekking or uh, doing something like that we ensure that we don't step on grass uh, so these are this is a very minute example of a very yeah. large impact that we are trying to create but yeah so day to day behavior and how to sort of make it more pro social um is the entire aim of karma module which actually is an acronym for kindness altruism righteousness mindfulness and authenticity so those are the attributes that we want to drive in behavior i'm definitely not going to remember the full form but for the next question i'm going to go over to vivek vivek what are really the new experiences you know you went through when uh, you sort of uh, became an entrepreneur you know being an actor for such a long time and then getting into the entrepreneurship world what were some of the new experiences you sort of uh, experienced so i think uh, 
the motivation has been pretty clear. I mean, me, it's been 20 years, not only as an actor, but as a philanthropist. I started my journey in philanthropy uh, quite early and uh, worked some fairly large scale projects. So whether it's helping more than 250,000 children uh, from poor farmer families in India, from rural parts of India to get free treatment for uh, cancer, you know, for pediatric cancer, helping kids fight cancer over the last 20 years, uh, creating a, a full-fledged network across the country to, to help these children. And luckily, most of them survive because uh, with children, if you have early intervention, especially in, in leukemia, uh, the chances of survival are quite high. Mm. Uh, similarly, working in terms of uh, Project Devi, which is something I started about 14, 13, 14 years ago, where we started rescuing girls from child prostitution, um, you know, forced labor. Uh, and today we've rescued almost 14,000 girls uh, over the last wow. decade and a half uh, and empowered them through education and global exposure, right? A lot of these girls who are from villages are today studying uh, or pursuing careers in UK, in Canada, in the United States. Uh, and giving back to their society, right? Giving back to Bharat. So that has always been a big part of my motivation. Uh, but aside from being, say, the brand ambassador for the Social Justice Ministry of India or uh, working with the United Nations Youth uh, Program, uh, what I felt was that faster scaling will happen not through non-profit, but through social impact for profit. So the idea was, how do you build social impact for profit businesses? So we did Finance Peer, where we ended up creating India's first interest free education fee financing loan company. Then now we are doing iScholar. iScholar is a company that connects digitally a bridge between India and Bharat. Uh, you know, so best teachers are in India. Most aspirational students live in Bharat. So how do you find a digital bridge uh, for live two way communication? Uh, we're working on um, agriculture with farmers. How do you enhance their incomes through a platform called AgriBid, uh, which has already done 200 crores in GMV in its first year and is affecting the lives of 800,000 farmers already. So mm -hmm. impact stories like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, roadside safety assistance uh, through Ready Assist. So these are the companies that I have either co-founded or, or empowered. And normally I go into slightly large, large, later stage companies, companies that are already proven. But Anu's story was so compelling and it started with our discussions almost a couple of years ago um, where she kept telling me about what she's trying to build, what she's trying to develop. And then it was so compelling uh, because I feel that this kind of a tool, Civic Empathy Index, um, the way I see it, the way I perceive it, um, is today, having been a part of the CSR ecosystem for 20 years, when I see uh, a corporate wanting to write a big sum of money towards CSR, firstly, what are, what, what are the resources they have to figure out? Why should we do this to achieve what objective? Is this the best way of doing it? Can we achieve the objective most effectively like this? Um, what is the amount of engagement that we will get with the target, right? Say, I'll give you an example. When we were working with uh, Habitat for Humanity, we were building toilets in, uh, uh, in a small town, small village outside Pune. Mm -hmm. And the toilets for women who used to go out in the fields got rejected. Brand new toilets have been built, but the women refused to use them. And the reason was just to understand the cultural context from them was that they felt that all day we work so hard. The only time we get to engage with each other is in the morning. And now you've shut us up in individual doors and silos and we can't talk to each other. We can't see each other anymore. So they refused to use the toilets. So the learning from that was to cut the toilet doors in half, right? So they can sit, do their business at the same time, look at each other and have a conversation. It was as simple as that. But the example I'm trying to give is that when you're doing social impact projects, is there a requirement for a school year? Is there a requirement for uh, a market year? Is there a requirement for, um, you know, people with, uh, uh, you know, physically challenged uh, people? You have to figure out what the actual need is. 
And when you figure the need out, there is an automatic sense of ownership of the people. The target group starts to get involved. And when the target group starts to get involved, it's always a success story. I remember when I rebuilt the villages uh, post the tsunami, um, people said, why are you doing this? Why, you know, you've done so much work. You've built, you rebuilt the village. You've built schools. You've built primary health care centers. You've done all of these things. And you've built homes for so many people. And now you're just leaving. You don't want to keep anything under your your foundation. I was like, no, I have to empower these people, engage these people. I created a council of elders of, of, of older women with almost like the British shadow ministry style of younger women kind of working in reporting to each older woman. And I created a council of women because I truly believe that women are better custodians than men um, and handed it over to them saying that now this is your baby. Now you run this show. This is yours. Yours to criticize, yours to be responsible for, yours to build. I've given you the platform. And I walked away from it, never going and claiming any authority or ownership or any kind of control in, in a trust structure. Just let it be. I think those are the most successful projects because there's stakeholdership. There's, you know, you're empowering people to be stakeholders and therefore empower the project. The Civic Empathy Index, I think, can create this to scale in a massive story, whether it's working with governments and understanding where their spending for public good is going, how it is going, how do you measure it? How do you measure that impact and how do you come back saying that this is super and we need to spend more on this, we need to scale this up. So stuff like that. Uh, and Karma Points, I think to me, the vision when, when we spoke to Anu about it was, the, the idea was, how do you build a sense of civic empathy and civic mindedness aside from the textbook, because civics used to be one of the most boring subjects in school. So how do you build a gamification? How do you build a socialization within kids for that? How do you create points? How do you create recognition? How do you create you know, uh, 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 peer engagement by doing something like this? And that's what it encapsulates. And uh, if I may add to that, Kabir, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, since the pandemic right, hit, um, the need for social impact is actually accelerated in millennials. Uh, you know, eight in 10 millennials actually want to be engaged with companies uh, that are doing something that creates social impact, that are purpose-driven, so right. to say, right? So when uh, the stakeholdership that Vivek is talking about also lends itself to uh, the in entire employee structure that we have today. So people want to do something that is going to be pro-social, but they just don't have the resources in one place. So what I am also aims to do and is already in the process of doing is bringing everything that is impact related under one umbrella. So if a person wants to find policies related to a specific SDG, you know, they can come on IM and they can find it. If they want to figure out what campaigns are going on in India across the globe, they can come on IM and find it. They have a gamified platform that is going to enable them to participate in these campaigns and also start their own campaigns, right? And in the process, gain something called karma points that they can actually, uh, you know, not just feel good about, uh, but also use for uh, exchanging maybe social benefits. That's the long-term vision, but I mean, that's that's the entire, um, you know, goal that, that we are aiming for. Right. Kabir, so, I mean, you want to start a, 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 a social impact initiative. You don't know, uh, say, you come from the city, you want to go back to your village, you want to start something there. A, you don't, need, you, you don't know how to vet whether there's really a need for what yeah. you're asking for. Are you duplicating capacity? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, should you be building this or should you be building that? You know, where's the need in the, in the market, in the system? Uh, the second thing that th that it enables you to do is that, okay, now you've identified what you want to do. How are you going to do it? What are the best practices all over the world? Who are the domain matter experts? Who are the subject matter experts who can guide you? Who can guide you through this? And then now if you've decided you want to do it, how do you achieve a seriousness before, you know, a well-informed seriousness before you now start actually raising for the cause? And when you want to raise for the cause, where's that platform that you can raise for the cause within, that can champion that cause? And then you take that cause and eventually get funded, whether it's from corporates or individuals, crowdsourcing, a, a, a multi-pronged platform that allows you the whole ecosystem. And then when you've achieved what you want to build, 
how do you measure the impact of that and report it accurately and honestly that this is the impact that has been created in a third party way you know something that's completely unbiased and very very uh, uh, meticulous and and honest transparent so how do you get all of this under one space along with a repository of content that if it's just a spark uh, kabi is interested in educating the girl child but doesn't really know you know what it's all about now he starts to watch a video or two videos or 10 videos that are specific and focused to the cause that kabi is is resonating with at this point and and sorry so you start to resonate with that cause and then it helps you develop and build uh the depth in, in that thought process by seeing more content related to it so it's a it, it, it's a singular platform uh for all needs that are related to civic empathy and the index itself is something that we must speak about and i would like anu to elaborate on it but to me what's amazing is that we live in a world where there is an index to evaluate there's an index to evaluate there's an index to evaluate your financial capabilities but there is no index to evaluate your civic engagement and empathy right and that's a big gap and that tells you a lot about the world we live in so i think there is a very important place for civic empathy index uh, and and we're really proud to be uh, you know founding something that um is probably going to be a first uh, uh, you know in 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 the world yeah that that's quite something and i think one of the key takeaways from what you just said is that you know even when you're doing something which uh, obviously is uh, is noble and has a civic consciousness and good for the people it's very that the research part of it is very important when you talked about the toilets right i mean you know many people go i want to do something good and then you know you build the toilets and do it but uh, do they need the toilets how do they need it how do you modify it to that way that of course is very important uh, last two questions for vivek we're talking about companies right um, your debut company completes i mean completed 20 years uh, this year so what were some interesting reactions during your debut that time 20 years back i mean i saw the movie in the hall i remember uh, i used to love that song danda hai pro danda hai ye and so many other things so what were some <laughs> of the interesting reactions which you got at that time both from actors and from the audience uh you know uh when when company happened uh uh it, it kind of took everybody including me by storm right because nobody expected you know when you make something like this and and i'm very fortunate to be a part of such a cult classic uh, you, you don't expect it to be a cult classic you generally don't carry the arrogance saying that oh, i'm making such a kick ass movie you know you you make your best movie you can and then you hope and pray that you know it works and you know people like it but company created a cult of its own uh, i remember uh, when company was releasing april 12 2002 i was filming for satya the same weekend mm. um getty galaxy cinema are you aware of getty galaxy I, in uh, in mumbai yeah so it's mumbai. hardcore city bajao yeah. yeah so hardcore city bajao you know mass commercial cinema and and not one but five of them you know getty galaxy gem gemini all of them so two minutes walk from giri galaxy there's a railway fatak there's a crossing and rani and i were filming there and throughout the shooting of satya i was nobody she was rani mukherjee uh, so it used to always happen that you know whenever rani was around there used to be one or two security guys to take care of rani and when i was there nothing hum to mazdoor aadmi shooting karte karte we used to carry the stand also and camera also and shaad ke sath i used to you know literally him the director me the star of the movie we used to carry equipment and stuff like that right uh, uh, because it was made with that kind of budget and that kind of you know very familial vibe like a family yeah. but 20 um, years on we think you are exactly the same i'm sorry for interjecting <laughs> yeah, that's true it's exactly the same no that's very kind of you um when i was uh, shooting on that sunday sunday ka hi din tha when we were getting a uh, opportunity to to shoot so i was shooting on that sunday dekhte dekhte yaar 2 3000 ka crowd aa gaya wahan pe and it the shoot had to shut down they had to catch me they had to put me into one of the makeup vans they had to lock me in there till the cops scheme and the cops had to escort me out of there and i remember shad who's a dear friend also and my director it was his debut film he looked at me and gave me a hug suddenly as the cops were taking me out you know security he said tu star ban gaya mere bhai 
<laughs> so you know there was a there was an epiphany there was a moment and and i remember that so clearly uh life changes over one weekend totally totally and that's i mean see that that's the thing i mean uh, that's why i love talking to people from uh, from the film industry there are so many interesting experiences really which uh, we get to know sometimes we don't get to know but take care and uh, nice talking to you thank you kabir bye anu thank you kabir